Okay, uh, are we recording now? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, okay, the host is recording, which is great. And uh, okay, uh, so la um, some more announcement. So last week, uh, last Saturday, we had a uh, program gathering party in Beijing. So we do have a group of people there, which is great fun. And uh, probably I could show more pictures in the chat. Uh, later on and it is great fun and the next month in november uh, we have another party gathering in wuhan uh, so for those of you who are in or near the city yeah uh, please consider joining our party there in wuhan next month uh, in november in late november uh okay tonight we're going to have three speakers and each of them are going to give a very brief introduction about some basic fundamental principles of how they're uh, working out for their uh, tech projects. So for the very first one, the Internet uh, Worms group uh, presented by uh, Jin Yi Cheng, um, currently uh, as a student as a, at a chemical engineering at the University of Washington in Seattle. So Jin Yi Cheng, please go ahead. Okay, hello everyone in Zooms. Uh, today I will give a brief talk about this topic in my screen the principles of the web worms, or we can call it the crowners or the spiders. And uh, first, let me introduce myself. Uh, I was in my gap year, actually, and I'm from the general group, and now let's start. And I will give a brief talk, brief introduction about our group. Uh, the general group's group, the goal, is we want to establish a network-wide general database and provide geoscience general information and related search codes. So each group of students can search for related data and obtain information much faster. And what we want? In other words, what should the database have? Uh, we want the paper's information. For example, the DOI, the title, the abstract, uh, or the download link, ethics thing. And the last question is how to do this job or the method. Uh, it is also today's topic, the web one. So now let's see these words. Uh, you can clearly find our object. The information are all in the web. So suppose you guys do not have any related skills and the background knowledge about Internet One. In order to have a, in order to having a better understanding about Internet One, I prepared several point points today to give a brief shot about the web. So here we go. So actually, today's web page is actually written in three computer languages. The first one is called the HTML language. Uh, the full name is the Hypertext Markup Language. It was used to write the basic elements of the page. Or we, call, or we can call these basic elements the nodes. So the page, the web page, actually made up by many kinds of the nodes. And the second language is called the CSS language. The CSS language full name is Cascading Style Sheets Language. It's kind of a decorating language. It was used to define the style of these nodes. So it's just kind of uh, give the unique structure to the nodes. And the last one is called the JavaScript. Uh, this, this language is very different from the Formal 2 language. It's a real competent language. That means it's very similar like, we, like our Python or the Java or the C++. It's an interactive language and it was used to realize human competent interac interaction. So if you want to be a, a front stage engineer, you will need to learn these three languages. And now, after learning these definitions, I will go into give a real example. Hope you can have better understanding. And uh, this is a journal that I have run before. As you can see, here on the left side is a journal website that I can actually, that you can actually see on our browser, right? And the right side here, right side here is the source code of this web. Uh, it's the source code of this web. So. What we can actually say is very different, right? This is source code. This is what we can what we can say on our browser. It's very different. And here, the right cycle here, the H1 class, and this single quotation marks means the nodes. And the green cycle here, the green cycle is the CSS is given by the CSS language. So this is the unique character of this H1 node. And the, the blue blue cycle here, blue cycle here is the text of this node. So here is the format of how a uh, front station writes a node, right? Yeah, the blue one is the text of this node. And uh, let's see, this, this blue one, uh, 
this is, is non sequential injection of T zero H one. Uh, this is actually the title of this paper. Uh, you can see this is actually the title of the paper. So we have the conclusion. What we can see on our browser is the source code, the nodes, text parts. So all the informations are in the nodes text. So uh, now you may have an idea about what we, what we need to do in next step, right? We need to select the correct nodes from the source code and use its text part. Um, and now, let's see, let's see what actually happened in Python. I mean, the one algorithm. So the first step, the one will send an HTTP request to the web servers. And uh, this step is very similar to, uh, very similar to how we access our website. Uh, the HTTP request usually concludes the URLs, the cookies, and the IP address. Uh, and all of these things are used to identify your computer behavior. And the next step is after the web servers receive the request, uh, it will automatically feedback the response. Here, the red word is the response. So the response is actually the web source code. So here, here, the response is actually these things, this source code. Uh, and the next step is the most important step. The one after the one receives this response, the one will retrieve the response and find the nodes we want and give its text value to the variables, right? And the last step is the one will automatically save these variables and output into documents. Uh, we have many type of documents. We can save it in the CSV, CLS, uh, I As I said before, right, the step three is the most important step. So let's go deep into the step three. Uh, and, that's, and that's why I talked about how the web are written at the beginning. In order to select the node we want, here uh, I use the H1 node, for example. We have two selectors that we can use. The first one is called XPath selector. Uh, it works to select the design node according to the path of the HTML uh, element. And the second selector is called CSS selector. Uh, we select the node through the character of the node. Right? Uh, that is uh, the word of CSS means, right? Uh, we use the CSS to give the character of the node. Uh, let's see, how do we use these two sectors in this example? Here, the first one, uh, we just set up a new variables called name the title, right? We know this text is the title of this paper. So we set up a new variable named title and we give its text value, the node text value to the title. Here we use the response dot XPath. XPath means we call the XPath function. And in parentheses, remember, uh, what we can put in this parameter should be in the string type. So in the Python, we use the calls, the calls marks to change the, change the date type into the string. And uh, in the XPath grammar, we use the slash to mean the inherent says pass. Uh, but if you want to find a node just in the middle of the source code, we don't, need, we don't need to write all the paths. For example, we don't need to write the div slash section slash. We don't need to do that things. We just use the dot slash slash double slash to, to mean all the inherent state paths from the node we want. So here we just select the father node of the H1 node because the character of this father node is very, uh, very sharp, right? So we use the div. This is father node of the H1 father node, right? We just use this. This format to choose the father node and use a slash and to find this children node. The children node is what we want, right? And we use the slash and the text with empty parentheses. This means we can call its we can call its text part and we give the text part to the title variable. Mm, and in the second sector, uh, the CSS sector, its grammar is different. It's a little bit different with the XPath sector. Uh, we use the H1. H1 is the is the node name we want, and the DAW, and what's what's behind the DAW is the is the is is uh, character, right? And we use the two columns uh, with text to call its text function text parts, and uh, then we give this text value to the title. Uh, because the limit of time, I cannot fully explain it in details. But here are the three videos just by our group members about how to use Python to actually achieve what I said just now. So, and there are their links. Uh, but these this videos are just in 
Chinese. So if you want to learn something in English, I suggest you to search the CSS lecture or express lecture on Google or on YouTube. And now it seems a lot of work we need to do, right? But luckily, we don't need to do all of this operation by ourselves because our Python has many useful and powerful Chrome libraries. Uh, they, uh, they have their own frameworks and the features. What we need to do is follow these frameworks to complete our Chrome program. And here we have the built in libraries, uh, the request, the URL lib, attic, and we have the external library, the scrappy, the pi regang attic. And our group uses this library. Uh, it has many advantages. It works very fast. It was easy to understand. And it has the power of the multi-threading and the data cleaning. Uh, and if you want to learn this, uh, this, this internet one, here are the suggestions I will give you. So the first, uh, I suggest you to use the request for practice. And when you are familiar with the request framework, then you can start learning Scrappy. And we have using uh, this lab, this library to ground down more than 600,000 data. Uh, the one data means the one paper's information. And the last, last part is the challenges we're facing in this job. So suppose the one works like a bit as a house, right? And take back the information that not belongs to you. If you go to your friend's house, they are very nice and will not prevent you. But what actually happens in life is that the spider are the enemies of the website. So almost every website, almost every front station engineers have defensive method to detect the one and pro prevent it to protect themselves from attack. So here are the common defensive methods they will use. The first one, they were using verification code. And the second, they need you to log in. And the last but not the least one is the most strict way. Uh, they will force out the suspicious IP address, right? Um, but Although we have those uh, challenges, we still have the solution. About the first one, we can use the OCR lib. The main, the full name is optical character recognition. It's kind of uh, machine learning, right? So it can help us, it can automatically recognize the verification code and conclude it into the HTTP request. And the second, second we need to log in before and we need to carefully control the ground speed. And the last one, Last one is on the way. I suggest you change your IP address. And luckily, they usually block the IP address only for one day. So that means after one day, you can continue your spider work. Uh, and this is all the things I want to show you today. And thanks for watching my talk. Uh, OK, thank you very much for sharing. So do we have any quick questions? Okay, it's great. Thank you for sharing, Jingcheng. Okay, next, uh, uh, Li Xingcheng, could you share your screen? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, maybe uh, Jingcheng, you should stop your sharing this. Okay. Uh, Can you see the point point now? And can you hear me? Oh no. Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, uh, now, now, now it works. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I have to... Okay, and okay. Um, hello. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Li Xinchen from Group Cloud, and combining with what I have learned from my group work. Uh, I would like to share some of my understanding of cloud computing with all of you today. And as you see, uh, these are 
all our group members. And uh, firstly, I think maybe you want to figure out what is cloud computing. Well, as the definition given by NIST, cloud computing is a model. Then what kind of model it is? From Wikipedia, it said, cloud computing is the on-demand availability of computer system resources, especially data storage and computing power without direct active management by the user. Uh, well, let's mean there is no need for you to manage hardware or other infrastructure, and uh, there is no need for you to build computer centers. What you have to do is just paying for what you need and submitting your packages to the platform. Well, in this chart, it illustrates the most popular and competitive companies which provide cloud computing up to the August 2020. And you can see that the big three are AWS from Amazon and Azure from Microsoft and Google. You can also find Alibaba and Tencent in this picture. Okay, uh, and I want to show you an example to let you know how to use cloud computing and how easy it is. Um, I will take AWS for example. It provides different kinds of services to handle different kinds of work. What you have to do first is to is to choose a service that, uh, and then you can choose a cloud computing center considering about your location. Um, you, and you can, then you can set the computer configuration, which is based on your need. Then the AWS calculator will estimate your total cost. After you pay it, you can use the resource freely. Uh, really, easy, really easy, isn't it? And the using of Huawei Cloud is also the same. Well, although it seems easy for us to use cloud computing, uh, it do has a tremendous system and a lot of branches. And I think some basic knowledge may help us to have a better known of how, how it, it works. Well, the first one is cloud computing is based on virtualization. Usually virtualization is the process of running a virtual instance of a computer system in a layer abstract from the actual, uh, act, act from the actual hardware, but hardware storage network can all be, can all be uh, virtualized. And there are three types of compu uh, cloud computing. Uh, the first one is public cloud. All hardware, software, and other supporting infrastructure is owned and managed by the cloud provider. You access these services and manage your account using a web browser. Uh, Huawei Yun uh, is belong to public cloud. And the private cloud, uh, cloud computing resource is used exclusively by a business or organization. A private cloud can be physically located on the company's on-site data center. Some companies also pay third-party service providers to host their private cloud. A private cloud is one in which the services and the infrastructure are maintained on a private network, and governments usually use this kind of cloud computing. Well, uh, the last one is hybrid cloud, uh, which combines the public and the private cloud together. Well, uh, there are also three types of cloud services, and you can see three of them in this picture. Uh, and IAAS uh, includes some basic uh, configuration, and the PAAS is designed to make it easier for developers to quickly create web or mobile apps without worrying about setting up or managing the underlying infra infrastructure uh, of servers, storage, network, and data basis. So it added uh, operating systems and some development tools. And finally, SAAS is a method for delivering software applications over the internet. Users connect to the application over the internet, usually with a web browser on their phone, tablet, or PC. Uh, these three kind of um, model build on top of one another. Uh, and finally, uh, after you have finished all the work, you need to use Docker to submit your program to the platform. Usually, you need a, a folder to accommodate your Docker file, codes, data, and some and sometimes uh, some of your settings, maybe. 
And it is an example of a Docker file in which you need to define the environment uh, of your images and some other command as you see here. Uh, and finally, what you should do is just hand in your image by the Docker and your program will be loaded, will be loaded on the platform. Just wait for its result. And here is the complete process of cloud computing. And I hope by this share, you have had a frame of the cloud computing and you can ask any questions really. Okay, that's all. Okay, thank you for sharing. So do you have any questions from the audience? Yeah, okay, then I will. Yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah, yeah, please exit sharing the screen. Yeah, uh, and then we do ask our team participants that who use, uh, yeah, if any of the calculation that use more than 10 minutes of your personal computer, yeah, please consider putting them on Huawei Cloud. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay, that looks good. And uh, Jose, could you share your screen? Yes, sure, or can you hear me clearly? Professional uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, voice is clear. Uh, I think normally there is a delay in the pictures. Uh, so uh, normally the voice comes first and the pictures comes in Latin next. But I think it should be okay. okay. It's just a couple of seconds of delay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, okay. I'm the leader of the machine learning group and today I'm going to launch a brief introduction of how to be a member of to join our machine learning group and this kind of contents I need you to know and this is quite essential for you even if you don't have any idea about uh, about the algorithm of the machine learning before because we believe that after joining this group and you can learn quickly through the resources on the internet or all the video we have put on the Bilibili or like in the YouTube. So today, uh, after considering how to just make them short for you guys to know what we are doing, and I, I just make them in those questions. And after answering those questions, I, I will hope that uh, you guys will know what are the machine learning members are operating and how they interact with other groups and how they work with the codes. And specifically, it's the most critical for us to do is to do the job with the codes, right? So here are a bunch of questions we need to answer. The first is where to find the codes we have and how to ask, execute them and what's the difference between this repository of new algorithm and another repository of the algorithm. And after that, if you make your own codes, how can you to do some contribution to the repository already have in the like in the GitHub or GT? And the next is to how to apply those algorithms we have into the practice. And the final one is to is to explore the resource we have or uh, and we have already built for our group. Because after thinking a lot about the, whether I need to tell you guys about uh, the knowledge of the algorithm and I think a lot and I think it's quite short for us to just break them in 10 minutes. And apart from the other two, uh, the, others, uh, the others group saying, uh, we have a mature, like a mature code management platform to upload our codes and you can see the uh, treatment by other group members. So based on that, I think that uh, it's quite important to know the whole process of how to be a good members of the machine learning. And in this uh, presentation, I will combine some uh, real practice and with some knowledge based, uh, which are basic and you need to know. So where to find them? And now we have two platform to just to hold our code we already have. The first one is Giti. And it's so here. And the other one is GitHub. 
and both platforms are synchronized, even if they are not mirroring, but uh, they are the same, whatever in the new algorithm repository or in the old algorithm zipper. And I will just make them uh, as, I will just make them the same all the time. And after just knowing how to find the code and how can you get the code, because except for the member in the machine learning group, the other ones in the scientific group or from other groups, they will have the need to just download the code and which has been written by the machine learning groups. And there are three ways for us to do it. The first one is to download the zip directly. And it's the most easy one to do because it doesn't need you to have any uh, basic knowledge with the Git or uh, this kind of distributed or uh, code management controlled language. And the other one is the GitHub desktop. And also the marvelous one is the Git language itself. And we can see here, like when you just open, when you just open this page and you just click one of the repository. After entering it and what you can do, because in this uh, part, uh, the most important one for R to do is how to download the code and how can you use it. So uh, here is a button about the code and here are the three ways. You can download the zip directly and after you download it, you can find it in your, just like this, sorry. Here and new algorithm and old algorithm. In this directory, there are all of the codes we have put on the GitHub or GT. And also it can work in the app like the github desktop and you can just store all the code in this app and apart from this you can use the git language to download the code directly in the terminal on mac or the like the cmd on the windows like this If you know how to control, or if you know how to use the cell language or uh, on Linux, and because they are originated from the same uh, version of the computing system units, and you can just download the code directly through this Git language. And if you are familiar with it, and there are three ways to download the code, and after that, you can use the code directly. Okay just go back to the PT. And the next thing is about how to execute the code because after grasping all the code you need and the next, next step for you to do is to execute them. So how to do that job? So uh, mostly there are two common IDE we use for the Python list or because if you use Python to do the code work and there are two common IDE for you to do. The first one is the Jupyter notebook and which is planted into the Anaconda and the other one is the PyCharm and they represent two different kinds of style of typing the code. Uh, I will show you right now. The first one is to use the Jupyter notebook and it's quite easy to use it. You can just open the Anaconda directory like this. Sorry. Yeah. And you can see that the Jupyter notebook is shown here and you just click the launch. After that, it will open the page and you can just choose uh, what 
what file you want to execute. Like because we download all the file in here. Wait. You can see the file of the new algorithm and also the other file of the old algorithm. And I just choose them randomly. And you can see I just clip one of the algorithm a class of clustering. And after it, you can execute all the code we have written. And the other one is about the PyCharm. And also it works, but if you are not good at coding, it's not recommended for you to execute your code on the PyCharm because it needs you to know something about the computer knowledge like this. Uh, I just choose one of the code I have downloaded from the repository of all the algorithm. And this is the calculator. And after you just open it, and what you should do next is to set up the configura configurations. And almost when you are doing this, you, there are two things you need to set. The first is the script pace, which means, uh, which, yeah, which is uh, which directs to the pace of this script exists, and the other one is the Python interpreter, and you should choose the the Python version for your local computer version, and after doing this, you can run it, and this is a part about how to execute the code, and what's the difference, and then we should know what's the difference between between the new algorithm or repository and the old algorithm repository because we have seen that uh, except for the, the other two groups and we can see all the code we have put them on the git or the github and you can download whatever you want and they have been coded already and there are a group, there are few description of how those code works. And also there are a lot of annotation of every, or uh, almost every line of code and uh, annotation just tells us how the code worked. And so the next thing for us is to figure out the worst difference between them. And if you download the code from the new algorithm repository, and which means that you can do, do it yourself because uh, you can just move one block of it and you can just make a match and make a combination of different scripts of the codes like this. You can just run this block and after doing that, you can run this block also. And which means that all of the block are almost separate block, even if they are they have some internal connections, but uh, they are not like what they saw on the old algorithm. Because in the old algorithms or uh, repository, all the codes are packaged and already, which means that you don't need to do any uh, change on the code itself. You just need to follow the description and follow the readme te uh, read test. It will tell you how to operate the code uh, one by one and what you need to parse it as the parameters to the code itself, like this. Like, uh, like the script we have on the calculator. And we download it from the code old algorithm. And here we can see he's the code for the calculator of the end member of the Gannett. And we can delete the result it's produced. Like this. Wait, I will delete it. Okay, and in the code from the old algorithm, you the only thing you need to do is to just 
run the code directly, like I just click the button of running. And after that, you can see the result will produce automatically. Uh, it's kind of magic. You don't do anything. You just follow the description of the steps in the readme text directly. So these are the distinctive difference between different or uh, between these two repository. And after that, how can you to make contribution to the repository? Oh, as well as the one we see in how to download the code. And they are all they are also have two ways to just upload the files or upload the code you make to the repository. The first one is quite simple because you just need to wait or oh, yeah here. Just at the at the left side of the code button, you just need to click this add file button and you just choose to upload your files. And then you can make your own contribution to the repository. And as the because you are not the master, so uh, you should get approval from the managers and they will do the agreement on the pull request and they will review the code you contribute. And also you can do it more or uh, like uh, you can do it more like the coder way. In the coder way, which means that you need to learn some basic knowledge about how to do them in the terminals. And you should learn how to use the self language. And it's, it can, or you can learn how to do it through the video on the Bilibili. I'm not showing here. And after that, uh, what algorithm can we apply to the circumstance we want? Uh, now, here are a few machine learning algorithms we have on the repository. They are divided into three parts. The first one is the algorithm of the supervised learning. It comprises of two parts. The first one is the classification, and which includes the SVM and DNN, CN, etc. And the other part is the regression. Like uh, it's, it's made out of the example learning or polynomial and linear regression and et cetera. And also the SVM can work in the regression also. The second, uh, part, the second branch of this repository is the unsupervised learning algorithm, which is made of from two parts. The first one is the dimensional, dimensional urnality reduction, like the PCA manifold learning. And the other one is the clustering. And almost, or you can see, is the k-means, the DBSK, and also the Gaussian mixture. Anyway, there are also, or there are also, have, or there are also some other codes or which can just fulfill some different jobs like the calculator for the end member of, di or of different rocks, like we have the garnet and also the parse. And like there's three dimensional protein and some code about how to do some statistical technique. And all of the code you can find on the GT or the GitHub. And anybody is allowed to download directly from the new algorithm or the old algorithm. And there, I have just introduced you guys about how to download them directly and how to make your own contribution to them. So the final one is about uh, the way to learn them. Because uh, this progress are like, we have done a lot of job on this course and also we have made some records on how to learn them. And we have put them on their Bilibili and also they are in their YouTube. And in our plans, we will just make more videos about how to use those codes or 
correctly and how to use those code to the specific and the corresponding situations or in two months. And all of the code will be uploaded in these two platforms. And that's all. These are the things I hoped or uh, you can learn something from this speech. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for sharing. Uh, okay, do you have any quick questions from the audience? Okay, thanks again for the three speakers tonight. Uh, uh, furthermore, uh, let's upload more videos in the future on Billy Bill on YouTube to explain in different calls for uh, the details uh, of, some uh, of some procedures so that in the future for new participants that are joining into each, uh, that each tag chain or for uh, other participants that have relatively few uh, Python using knowledge or experiences to really catch it up. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, students that are coming from the science groups that ha are very eager to learn uh, more coding. So, uh, for example, in the gathering that I had in Beijing uh, last week, that uh, several people, um, several of our participants are showed their eagerness to do so. Uh, okay, uh, thank so much for this week. And next week, we're, um, uh, so three of the tech groups present this week won't a prison next week, and we're going to have a couple of the uh, science teams are going to present their work. Okay, so with that, let's wrap it up today. And uh, yeah, do remember next month we're going to have a party in Wuhan. Okay, have a good night, everybody. <laughs>